so, April is coming to an end. We've had some good days, some bad, but mostly just bad. The entire island has been dealing with weeks of non-stop rain, to the point the highway literally gave out a couple of weeks ago. And honestly, weeks of rain would probably make my shit crumble too. But hey, it's okay. I've been shaving the rust off of this thing so it's the next 30 years on the road, if we're even driving anymore at that point. It can be sort of similar to its last 30. And hopefully down the line when it's outlived my needs and possibly the entire world's, someone like me will want it for the same simple reasons I did. Or it comes from a simpler time. Realistically, I just want to drive it to at least Mexico if I can't find a van this winter. And having said that, it isn't a travel van or a bougie ass Mercedes Sprinter, but for 1200 bucks and some gas, I've seen a lot of this continent and have slept comfortably the whole way. I just didn't have a camera the first time. I think about it sometimes, the simplicity in the days of my childhood. Even if like, I wasn't like old enough to really like take it all in properly, I feel like if it wasn't for cubicles, it may have been perfect. Especially if society had like a more updated script, and sure popular fashion kind of sucked, and like maybe it's swinging back now with the nostalgia swing, but fuck it, who knows. But blockbuster, record stores, TV dinner, grunge and house music, and cell phones, they did like just enough that you didn't need to take your like CD player with you at the same time. I still have my first cell phone, my glove box, and that shit sucks compared to like what I got now. <laughs> but you know what someone should do? Recycle old cell phones or have people send them in at least. Got them. And put a decent disk drive in it. Install Spotify and that's it. A retrofitted Spotify Nokia iPod that has Wi-Fi. <laughs> I hope that once we're done screaming endlessly at each other on social media and are finally united in the idea of progress or something along those lines, we can strive to return to a simpler time. We can just vibe, you know? and don't need the new iPhone every year. Or at least when the iPhone 30 Pro X Max 8 Plus comes out next week, we can decide that this is good enough, that we don't need another $2,000 phone after this. A 420 megapixel camera with 69 terabytes of storage is probably good enough. And maybe we don't need these anymore if we stop doing that. I mean, right? I like the internet, right? It's funny, it's educational, but if COVID has taught me anything this year, it's that inside jokes don't get made on the internet, and that Skype really did just drop the ball, and do we really need to know what the homies are doing every second of the day, if we're all sort of doing the same shit? Like, I am this close to starting an OnlyFans. Even though like nobody will watch, I hope the homies at least do, and I'll take their tips as an early taxable birthday gift. Point is, if COVID ends, and I'm taking a siesta at Granola, Nalgene, Coleman, Stove, Lake, and I wake up to everyone on their phone, I'll probably be a little sad. Every second issue will follow the format of this issue. And every issue in between will follow the format of the first issue. Escapism and existentialism. And that sums that up. So before we get into all the fun stuff, I want to take a minute to answer all the questions I can about the truck. I bought this truck in 2018 after going through four other vehicles. The first of which was a newer model of this truck, but it was automatic and the transmission broke down three weeks into the beginning of the Pokemon Go grind. My second car left me in debt for three years, and then two cars later I found this one in a nice old man's backyard. The story was his father went blind 16 years prior, so everything on the car was from 2004. And I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't love it until it took me to LA and everything in between, for like 800 bucks worth of gas. And there was two reasons for that, that whole trip. Californication was one. And the other was having to listen to kids for as long as I can remember talk about how cool the pyramids, or even BC was. I actually remember lying in elementary by saying I went to Hawaii once over the summer, when in actuality, I was changing housing complexes because you see, when I grew up, we shopped at all our clothes in Valley Village and Goodwill back when we got roasted for it. And I found lying used to level the playing field in that aspect and allowed me to relate on some level with most kids. But after high school, I'd promised myself that I'd drive to San Diego by myself if I had to. I wasn't seeking like fame or weird social clout, I just wanted to go see the techno-cultural powerhouse grind and the Museum of Natural History if I could. So I got an LA Fitness membership so I could shower on the road because you got to shower. You gotta shower when you're living on the road. 
Made my sleeping quarters, changed everything but the tires, and bought some beans, mushroom soup, noodles, Frank's Red Hot, and in May of 2019, I had a party and took off the next morning, which everyone advised me against, and I saw way too much in way too short of time. I spent a day with my mom's high school friend in San Jose, three days in Santa Clarita with friends I was in a clan with on Halo Reach back in the Dizzy, like 10 years ago. I got under the influence of Venice Beach with them, I drove through Las Vegas, Escalante, all that stuff, and a couple days later, I was in Idaho, which I probably won't return to unless I like it's a life or death situation. It just wasn't for me. <laughs> I didn't really like Idaho. Like, I'm sure the people are nice because next door is Montana, and that was like top five in dopest places I've ever been. It's like the Windows 98 wallpaper with mountains everywhere, and their biggest city has like 40, 50,000 people, I think. So, I mean, Idahoans got something going on. When I was in Idaho Falls, which was okay, I remember pulling up Millwood's Town Center on Google Maps because I was just done and ready to go home. I just thought that it was crazy that you could just give your phone a command and get directions home from like 4,000 kilometers away or whatever. In 2020, I went to Jasper like 14 times in this thing, and then we had a bunch of trips planned for the summer of 2020, but I don't, I don't remember what happened, but everyone worldwide it seems just like kind of dropped their plans um anyway so i got in the truck and drove all the way across canada back to st john's on the same tires from 2004 and i saw way too much way too fast and now i've been here for about seven months and the salt has started killing the truck I don't know when the truck will be roadworthy again, but when it is, we'll cut to somewhere cool. Today, we will be exploring the remnants of our Gentia naval base, a once massive armed stronghold that has now entirely surrendered itself to the forces of entropy and has become a canvas for people's art. Although parts of the base are spooky, the land itself is inarguably beautiful. As a location for a naval base, this was a pretty prime candidate. The flathead landform and the bay view made it very favorable. This base also in a way kind of gatekeeps the Gulf of St. Lawrence. In Argentia's earlier days, a few years prior to construction, many families lived here as they do in any inhabitable place in the coast of Placentia Bay, and was in fact a pretty large fishing dock. But its construction was so important, they ended up booting out 400 families. Imagine a knock on your door from some official and the next thing you know your house has become an anti-air battery and where you left your fishing nets is now where Nazis leave merchant supply boats. Wild. The base was constructed through 1940 and occupied in 1941. During the time of construction, FDR and some bloke from Britain would post up and create some vocal agreement to never fight in the Atlantic. Some people call this the Atlantic Charter, however, it was never a signed document. But it has been respected so far as such. Argentia was a place for many things. K-ships pulled up pretty often, lots of boats, lots of subs, and lots of flying machines. <laughs> Germany attacked Newfoundland a handful of times in the early 40s and took the lives of hundreds of innocent merchant sailors in the process. It's important to remember that bases like these are the reason that they never made landfall.
Now, most of the remote remains of our Gentry structures are stuff like this. I don't really know what purpose this served. I couldn't tell you. I know that a lot of the stuff over there, we see bomb bunkers and arms and depots and stuff like that, but it's all nice. Now, there are a lot of structures in these hills behind me. Some you may even see chimneys turn the background. I'm not going to zoom in on them because I frankly don't care, but they're there. There's lots. There's vehicle depots, bunkers, underground structures we're not going to find. Underground structures that have been sealed off. Freaking rumored missile silos. And no one has found them yet. So, who knows? I mean, it's the states. They have missile silos everywhere. Um, one time, when I was looking for this structure, one of my friends, we found like insane amounts of these big concrete structures just like laying around everywhere and, and uh, even like the tin can ones that they kind of like just put in the woods and stuff it's nuts it's crazy and there's also some weird stuff out there i walk into like weird squares made out of wood like i don't know it's a creepy place i don't want to go out there by myself it's scary but we will be going in to this structure here and this is the command center and uh, there's no lights inside it's all underground it's up inside this hill there's apparently like five stories but uh, everything underneath this level has been sealed off so we can't get there but we will go in we will go to the crow's nest we'll check out some graffiti the good and the bad and uh, I'll use my phone light and let me tell you it's not super fun in here. You know, if I hear some noise, you might see, hear me, see me run, panic. Um, and uh, excuse me if I start breathing a little bit. Jesus Christ, Lucy. What the fuck? But yeah, um, people used to say this is a hospital, but it is actually for sure the command center. And uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff's been sealed off. A lot of stairwells and uh, other rooms. I'm trying to figure out what these all were, what used to be in here, why there's like, grid patterns on the floor. It's uh, pretty hard. It also smells like someone was just in here with spray paint. Either that or I'm getting gassed out slowly. But uh, there's probably no reason for it to be haunted. No one died in here. Oh. It's a... Uh, Quite the excavational job, I'll give him that. Yeah, see, fuck this stuff. Have you seen anything on camera? Um, good for you. But yeah, I don't know where my dog went, so it's kind of spooky. But yeah, this is where all the stuff went down. This is where they were like, okay, there's this many U-boats offshore. And uh, to decide how to take action on that. Although there was never landfall here, there was never a, a ground invasion. Torpedoes never reached land or the shore here in Bell Island. They did. They killed about seventy people in one attack on Bell Island, and that was the only place that actually saw conflict on this continent. But yeah. So this is the crow's nest. Yeah, that thing is new. That is a new piece of painting. <laughs> Wasn't there last time? And it still smells fresh. <sighs> so yeah. If you can imagine before the trees were here, you'd probably see just about everything. Your old windows. You know? And you can get on top of this too. But the question still remains, why build something this massive and just leave it, just abandon it? And I think we'll find the answers in another place. Now before we leave this spot, let's take a second to look at some guns and some YouTube comments that correlate, because I think it's kind of funny. <laughs>
And this isn't even a facade either. Like this is actually thick. So this fuck big. It's kind of a shame they welded everything shut too. Could you imagine? They're like, oh, we better weld these things shut so that people don't come and have fun with them. Now we go back in time to the 60s, the 1660s to be precise. This is Castle Hill, also known as Fort Royal. It is one of the remnants of the French and British conflicts in Placentia Bay. Originally established by the French in 1662 to defend Placentia, the would-be capital of Placentia Bay, this place saw the most conflict it has ever seen during this time, and hopefully the most it will ever see, and is about as old as the oldest European colony in North America which happens to be St. John's. Back in 1690, this entire town was taken by the Brits, and they kept the entire population under lock and key in this church for six entire weeks. <laughs> they only left after taking the colony supplies and destroying the fort. In 1691, the French would rebuild the fort. The English would return with 800 men and again flee. Then of course the French would get paid back by attacking St. John's, which I mean, there's a whole lot more going on here today. <laughs> but this goes on for a while where the French are massively outnumbered and still lay claim to the area. This was also a fort where the French alliance with the Mi'kmaq against the English was seen. And by 1708, they had a firm acquisition of every colony besides Carboneer and St. John's. And at the end of the day, they won Newfoundland. But the French lost pretty much everywhere else, so they surrendered it to the British and posted up here forever. <laughs> I mean, they're still there. This is still a French island. Leaving the Mi'kmaq to deal with the English on their own. Had they refused to leave, many speculate Placentia would have been the capital of French Terre Nouveau instead of St. John's of English Newfoundland. The last conflict here is between 1721 and 1746 and remains massively undocumented when the Mi'kmaq raided the town and killed an estimated 200 English. Many people back in the time refused that it even refused to acknowledge that it happened. Maybe it just didn't happen. It remains massively undocumented. There's a 20 year gap where this may have happened. But what is the point of all this? All this stuff I'm just saying? Maybe it's that it's a history that many speculate has swung the other way, perhaps to be a more abundant indigenous culture and history in this province. But who's to say? Maybe it's because it's a place or once was at least, a place of great importance to very powerful identities, whose battles are only now annually reenacted re in plays that lack not in performance, but in content and context towards their motives, which probably just end up, ends up being money. Off the coast from here is an old settlement called Little Paradise, and another called Great Paradise, places that my grandfather would grow up and watch tons of Soviet and American steel move through the water near his home and witnessed several aerial exercises over the years. This was one of the busiest places in the province's history for hundreds of years, and now, 76 years have passed, and it may be the longest break this land has had since before colonial times, and the land is entirely succumbing, urbanization. with many of these settlements actually shrinking at faster rates now than even 30 years ago when they started closing the fisheries. And many places across Canada will probably face the same fate with oil. The questions are, how can a place that has been of such importance to such powerful people for such a long time be in the position that it's in? It leaves me to question, what things do we fight for? 
that won't even matter in time? Will my generation have an evil tide to break? Because that seems like that matters. A systemic revolution? Will there be plays, biopics, or reenactments of us just on our phones with a BPM of 180 on our smartwatches? Being too busy disagreeing with each other to act upon it? Once upon a time, it used to be the little people versus the loyalists. I mean, there are things people who disagree with on most things, who I feel would collectively been a little bit more angry about things that happened if it happened 10 years ago. It just doesn't seem like we care anymore. As ridiculous as that may sound, I think what really matters is for us to take care of each other and just remember to be happy and humble to the fact that we don't have to work a job as a courier for Uber sale and run the risk of being blown up in the middle of the ocean or have to be drafted to go kill people we don't know and haven't met in beautiful places for reasons that sometimes won't make sense to us. Yeah, sure, you may respond to Google Ag or Cloud Space and lock new headgear with fly mode activated. <laughs> but you can leave your driveway today and go literally 961 kilometers in any direction if you want for like $60 in your 2005 Honda Civic. Just like buy a tent, flaming hot Cheetos and some water and like seriously fuck off somewhere if you want. I feel like you'd probably find something worth more than the freshest or medium rarest pair of shoes. And that will conclude the April issue of Pink Mist. Thank you all so much for watching and leaving the feedback. Share if you want, like if you want, do whatever you want. I don't care. If you got this far, thank you. And just remember to come back to Earth, even if you burn up on the way back in. Um, this issue, very rushed, had a very busy month. The next issue is pretty much almost done, so um, I'll have a date out for that pretty soon, I think. And uh, yeah, enjoy your morning, afternoon, evening, weekend, whatever you're doing. Bye. <laughs>